It's the weekend. You know what that means. It's time for painting tips and coffee with Deanne. Welcome back to Deanne's Art Studio. I'm Deanne Mealy. Last week, I was so excited. I launched this new uh, free YouTube series with painting tips that hopefully they'll little, little snippets of information, tricks, tips that will hopefully make your artistic life just a little bit easier. We started with how to set up your palette. And if you haven't gone back to look at that video, I invite you to do so. It's just like 12, 13 minutes, but I showed you how I set up my palette with my warms to one side and my cools using Heritage Multimedia Acrylics. So this week, we are going to uh, work a little bit on brush sketching. It's nothing like you get into a class or a workshop and you're so excited and the instructor has this beautiful painting and you're just like, I'm gonna paint that. Mine's gonna look just like that by the time I leave this weekend or tomorrow. And um, all of a sudden they use that scary word freehand. Oh, freehand. Well, we're gonna talk about how you can overcome that scary part of freehand, how you can take a brush and brush sketch, set your sketch, set your design, how you can work through it using uh, Global Art Fusion brushes. Now these brushes are very, very soft. Let's go down to my palette. Let me set my coffee over. If you if you need to take a coffee break at any time, I understand, just pause me, okay? It won't, won't hurt my feelings, but I'll wait for you until you get back, okay? All right, so let's go down to um, my board. I prepped a board, it's kind of just a cool a gray, um, just pretty rough for this uh, brush sketch, but these are my Fusion uh, Heritage, um, I'm sorry, Global Art Fusion brushes, and um, I'm gonna show you on a flat brush, I show my students all the time how it's really important that you understand your tools, you work with your tools. So this video will be um, brush sketching and learning how to use a flat brush, all the different ways you can use it. I always tell my students, you have three different tools at least, if not four. You have the chisel edge, so you can be up, and that's kind of up on ballet toe, up on the tippy tippy point, and we can draw, if it wasn't so flared out and well loved and used, uh, you would be able to draw very, very straight lines with these brushes. Also, you can go on the ball of the foot, so you can you know, be on the, kind of like the ball, if you stood up on the ball of your own foot, you have that part of your brush. You have the little corner of the brush, that's great for little details, maybe in leaves, in mountains, uh, little flicks of grass, so you can use just the corner, you can load and flick your brush around. Then I can also drag my brush across a piece, I can drag it, lay it very, very flat across and pull. So I'm going to show you some of those little tips. This is a, I have a number 10 Fusion Flat and a number eight. I use these all the time. Uh, they also come in long handles, so uh, you can tell these are well loved. I just finished a landscape, but um, lo I love to use my long handles as well, like if I wanna really casual up and go way back on my brush to sketch in a landscape, or if you're really, really a tight painter and you need, you're used to always being real tight like this, this gives you a lot of opportunity to, um, really go casual and try to capture some of those impressionistic strokes. So let's set that aside. All right, so on my palette, I have put out just some earth colors, alrighty? And these are pure acrylics straight out of the tube, um, Heritage Multimedia Acrylics. And um, now I don't necessarily start my paintings like this all the time, but I do I do go over uh, brush sketching with my students so that it maybe will make their life just a little bit easier. So hopefully it'll help you too. When you have a background prep, now this is before we do any of this um, dragging through our background. Um, if you want to set your background, like you have movement in your background, some of the backgrounds that you've probably seen me um, in my other YouTube videos. But I'm going to just use water and I'm going to come up and just pinch my brush so that I have a nice, as much of a chisel as I can have on this brush into an earth tone. Now it matters, say I'm going to set this up as if I was going to paint, uh, maybe I was going to paint poppies. Okay, we're working on that. I filmed that for my new uh, upcoming class that I'm going to be doing on Mastering the Hue of Red. But I'm going to come in, so since it's poppies and they're going to be flowers, I typically will go into maybe some pine green and uh, dip into some earth color, maybe some um, raw sienna just to kind of tone it. Uh, you can lighten it up. So, and you can see when I lighten it up, I still have quite a bit of intensity. So I'm gonna tone that down with a little bit of burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, uh, reds and greens are opposite on the color wheel, so they'll tone each other up, all right? Then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna load my brush so that I'm pushing and it's as tight as I can get, you know, chiseled up. I'm looking for location. Say I'm looking at, maybe this is going to be 
um, a poppy, all right? And my poppy is kind of going to be focused on an oval shape. I'm gonna pull in, I am up very light on brush sketching on the very tip, ballet toe of my brush and uh, giving myself just some uh, stem guidelines. Maybe I'm gonna have, I don't know, a bud over here. So I'm using the ball of the foot, if you will, the ball of the brush, give myself some guidelines. And it's coming, uh, bring the stem down. So I'm just doing some brush sketching. Maybe I'll remind myself that I wanna maybe have a calyx or some leaves or something coming out from it. I can even enlarge it with the green. Um, I'm gonna come in, I'm just picking up a little more paint and I'm really keeping my brush chiseled up, okay? I'm gonna lighten it like I did before, lighten my color, because I don't want a ton of contrast because the worst thing is, especially when you're first starting out, is if you, you have a design and you set the stroke or you set the line of your design and you can never get rid of it. So it's very important to have your design closed in and paint beyond it, all right? Um, I'm gonna sketch in just a little bit, like give myself some leaves. I'm painting almost flat on this brush. This will be the impression of some leaves maybe. If nothing else, it'll give me some green movement later when we start painting. I'm gonna pull in uh, leaves over on the other side maybe. Now, I'm looking at this poppy. I don't really need, for me, much more than that, but it is good practice for you if you want to tap in, like, oh, this is where my center, say you're looking at a picture and you're looking at the center. I can deepen it just a little bit so I can do uh, warms and cools and lights and darks and get some contrast. But remember, I'm gonna wanna switch this poppy over to red. And um, then I might say, okay, so some of my petals will be coming in. Do I have it large enough? And it's kind of a way for me to check my design sometimes. And so I just kind of, in uh, a good warm up with little brush aerobics, it gets your brush loosened up, it gets you loosened up. And I'm just sliding in and I'll be looking at a picture, kind of following where I'm gonna go with this. And you can already start, because I told you it's going to be a poppy, you can start to see how the poppy, and that's my brush sketch, okay? And from there, what I would do next is um, I would come in with my reds and start my painting. I probably, this is pure acrylic. So since it's pure acrylic, it has water. It's water, it doesn't have extender. I can um, allow it to dry to set up quicker because I want it to dry so I can move on to my next step and not have the greens tone my reds as I move into my red. Okay, the next, say the next phases. Um, you can give your next steps of your painting. I can give myself some casual movement, you know, um, down for some ground and this is just you know this can be non-committing okay i don't have to keep it this way but that just gives me something to go on by isn't that kind of neat now i have a pattern freehand i have my own line that i can kind of follow now i'm going to want to paint outside these lines in order to make things much more casual as i go to paint it all right does that make sense <gasps> Isn't it exciting? So we just freehand sketched a poppy composition. And this board is just an eight by 10. So you can do this on any size, get yourself some small canvases. The great thing is the paint, the paint is not, does not have texture at this juncture. I thinned it out with some water, okay? And so remember that water is the, um, what is the, it's what makes this paint soluble, okay? It, it's what it, you know, you can reactivate this acrylic. It's a beautiful acrylic. It's very pure pigment, doesn't have filler in it, and you're able to reconstitute it with the water, or you can let it dry and set up so you can go in with some new layers. Now, let's look over one more thing this week before I let you go. So back down to your board. Now, the same thing could apply. I love that using this technique often with um, landscapes. And um, so if you're out there plain air, Let's just pretend we're out there plain air. And I'm like, well, you know, I really need a horizon line in. Same thing with the chisel of this brush, okay? So I can take the chisel of this brush. Any, I'm gonna set my, um, set my horizon line kind of low. And I'm gonna come in with a little burnt umber, alrighty? Now, why would I choose burnt umber? To me, it's an earth color, but I also don't want it to be super dark. So I'm gonna lighten that up. Maybe use a little bit of um, burnt sienna and a little bit of umber. Maybe a little, a little more umber there, D. A little more umber. There we go. And I'm going to come in. And now a T square works much better, but we can get this close enough, okay? 
So just for demonstration. So I'm going to come in on my chisel and put myself a horizon line in. All right. If you get that a little dark, you can go ahead and soften it just a little bit with your finger. So now I have a nice horizon line. And um, now if you're out there plain air, you can see where this would be very advantageous. Maybe you're not even, maybe you're going to take a picture, but, um, and you're not even going to paint the entire scene, but you want to capture kind of the feeling of it while you're out painting. So if I'm looking at something, I can brush sketch, say, and make this very, very simple. This is my horizon line. So maybe I have um, some mountains, um, medium beige, and I'll switch my different colors uh, on my brush, but I'll come in and say, okay, so I'm, you know, I'm looking, this is what I'm looking at. Or if you're just sketching a landscape from a photo that you have, um, I have a mountain and maybe I have, you know, some hills in my background. Um, maybe there's something coming in from this side, some mountains, and I can really just get a feeling for my painting. And all I'm doing is using the chisel and the ball and the flat of this nice fusion flat brush, okay? So I'm coming in just giving it, you know, just capturing the feeling, but I know how to use my tools. I'm using my tool and I'm, I'm using this number eight because this board is so small. You could see if you were out there and you had a large, like a very large board, how um, a three quarter inch flat would even get you through a lot of this, okay? And um, maybe this is, maybe this is some earth here and I know I'm gonna have some water probably some water, maybe this is a river gonna wind back through and it'll maybe it's gonna fade away. So I'm just gonna give myself some, fade that away. I picked up a little white and lightened my color. So I'm kind of using values to give myself a journey into my painting, all right? And up in the foreground right here, I do notice that there's quite a few uh, trees that are planted, but I don't need to commit to everything. But I just wanna know, okay, I have a tree, maybe there's a tree setting out, and this is just, how I would brush sketch so I know exactly, not exactly, I get a feel for my painting. And it's a great way to loosen you up if you feel like you're super duper tight when you're trying to paint, okay? And um, set in the line of the design. Um, you can come in, maybe there's, maybe there's shrubs back here along the mountain and you wanna give some variation, okay? Just some variation, capture some of that movement maybe comes through in the grasses here. Foreground, I know there's some tall grasses that's gonna grow in my foreground, all right? And I can set those in. This is just setting in the line of my design, all righty? Just kind of brush sketching. I love to do this when I'm feeling really, really, um, I'm just not loose. I'm not a very loose or, you know, wanna loosen up how I'm painting. I'll do a lot of sketching with my brush and see, I'll set in, I can set in right along my horizon line. Now you don't wanna to commit too much to your warms because you wanna allow for your atmospherics, but you can come back in. It's much easier to cool a warm than it is to warm a cool. And so I do tend to start kind of warm unless it's a seascape, all right? And this is where my water's gonna be, so I'm gonna keep this part, um, I may even have some blue and just put a little tint of blue into the light so in my brush sketch. And remember that burnt sienna is the opposite of blue. It's an orangey color. It will tone that blue for you. It got it really, really gray, didn't it? Pick up that earth color I had. I just want to capture just a tint of it so I know that that is my, maybe my water's coming through, okay? And notice I'm using the whole, I'm flattening my brush, flattening my brush, okay? Flattening my brush. So I can use the tippy, tippy tip of my brush up tall to sketch, and I can use the flat of my brush. All right, so brush sketch. Give myself just a little bit of a brush sketch, something to start working with. And then you'll come back in and you'll be able to come right in with your color. So you'll be able to set your sky, set all your colors. Let me show you that real quick so you'll know I'm not half, I'm not crazy. But brush sketching and use being able to use your brush. I switched over to a number 10. A three quarter would probably work a lot better. Let's grab that real quick. Three quarter inch flat. Okay, coming in with a three quarter inch flat. 
and I'm really grained and dulling down and you can see if I start setting in my sky that looks really really white on the on the camera so let me tilt that up for you and maybe I'm going to come up here and just start moving my blues in. This is just to show you what I'm talking about with the brush sketch, how that can help you, okay? And don't forget your tools. You have your fingers. <laughs> Those are some other tools. So brush sketching and finger sketching, all right? And then this should be a little more gray, not quite so white, more tinted, a little blue depending on what I'm looking at, okay? But this gets you started really, really quick. So I gave myself some guidelines with my brush sketching. And then I'm able to go back in and start developing my painting. So that loosened me up, okay? Loosened me up, made my water is gonna fade off over to one side so you journey into my painting. But that's all stuff that you establish as you get going on your painting. And, um, then you can come back in and notice I painted right through my sketching, but you can still see my trees. I can kind of still see my guidelines and that's why this works really, really well for me, especially when, especially when you're first starting out, okay? So that's brush sketching and using your fusion flats. Now this is a, I grabbed a one inch, it looks like, no, three quarter, yeah, three quarter inch. So there is a one inch. This is a loved, well loved brush. Okay, we'll put that one back. I'll use it on canvas. But a three quarter inch flat works super well just to kind of get you going. Um, sketching in. So we're brush sketching. We can brush sketch on the landscape. We can brush sketch if we need to to um, start setting in a, a simple floral, if you will. It just really loosens you up. You can see, uh, and nothing is uptight. Don't make your sketch really uptight, all right? No perfect lines. There is no such thing as a perfect line. That's not the purpose of your brush sketch, okay? And um, so, hopefully you've enjoyed that. That's just a little bit of, you know, a little bit of time, coffee time, let me tilt that up. A little bit of coffee chat for you today, just to, you know, if you're if you're uptight about uh, freehanding and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know, the more and more that you go through little exercises like this, this may not turn into be like, you know, your masterpiece. It, it could though, most of them that you don't think will, they usually end up being your best masterpieces, but they're great exercises for you to loosen up Learn your tools. Learn how to use the tip of that brush, the, the chisel edge, the ball of the foot, and these fusion brushes are perfect for it. So we'll also have to go over, um, spend some time maybe next week on what we can use synthetics for. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. My goodness, you gotta make these brushes and tools your own, all right? You develop your own calligraphy, you develop your own techniques, you develop your own styles. I'm just trying to give you some tips and some places to start, so hopefully it makes you feel a little more comfortable in your journey and you know, just a little bit easier for you as you're going along, okay? If you have any questions, questions, please put them down there, message, put them down, let's talk about it in the comments section. I'm looking, any of your, um, anything you want, any little inf more information about Heritage Multimedia acrylics, the mediums, the brushes, um, you know, anything at all that has to do with art. If you've seen a piece that I've painted, you wanna know, you know how I go about planning it or anything, uh, please comment below and we need some ideas. Um, let's fire it up down there. Subscribe, okay, don't forget. It's all about subscribing. I'd like for you to subscribe, click the follow, like it, and share it, all right? All right, thanks for joining me again this week. Um, for painting tips and coffee with Deanne. This is the best coffee. I'll have to share what I've been, I didn't spike it, I promise, but it has um, sugar-free banana syrup in my regular flavored coffee, and it is just, it's awesome. It's inspired me a lot to be super creative today. So I hope that uh, you found some information in this that'll be helpful. Don't forget to let me know what you think. And if you have questions, and uh, just email, comment, whatever works for you, okay? We'll see you next time on next week. Next week, same place, same time, same channel. Deanne's painting, uh, painting Tips and Coffee with Deanne. All right, have a great day. Stay safe.